Given matrix A, we're asked to find the determinant of A, then determine if A is invertible, then find the cofactor matrix of A, and finally find the inverse of A. Let's begin by finding the determinant. We will perform cofactor expansion on row two because row two has two zero entries. So starting with the first entry in row two, the determinant of matrix A is equal to zero times cofactor two comma one. Because we have a zero in their product, we don't have to find cofactor two comma one. So we move along to the second entry in row two, which is negative two. So we have plus negative two times cofactor two comma one, which is equal to negative one raised to the power of two plus two. The exponent is two plus two because the element is in row two, column two. And then we have times the minor. The minor is equal to the determinant of the matrix formed after eliminating row two and column two from the matrix which is a row and column of negative two. This leaves us with a two by two determinant where row one is two negative four and row two is four six, which we see here. And now I move along to the third entry in row two, which is another zero, which gives us plus zero times cofactor three comma one. But again, because we have a factor of zero, we can stop the product is zero. So simplifying the first product and third product are both zero. Simplifying, we have negative two times the fourth power of negative one is equal to positive one, and the determinant is equal to two times six, which is 12, minus negative four times four, which is negative 16. Simplifying, 12 minus negative 16 is equal to 12 plus 16, or 28. The determinant is equal to negative two times 28, which is equal to negative 56. Number two, is A invertible? And since the determinant does not equal zero, matrix A is invertible, which means matrix A does have an inverse. For number three, we're asked to find the cofactor matrix. Because we have a three by three matrix, the cofactor matrix is defined here in the upper right-hand corner. Notice how we have to find nine cofactors. And I've already set all this up to save some time, but let's go through the first row. Cofactor of one comma one is equal to negative one raised to the power of one plus one times the corresponding minor. The minor is equal to the determinant of the matrix after eliminating row one and column one from the matrix. If we eliminate row one and column one, we can see we have a two by two matrix. The minor is equal to the determinant of this two by two matrix where row one is negative two zero and row two is negative two six. The next entry in the cofactor matrix is cofactor one comma two, which is equal to negative one raised to the power of one plus two times the corresponding minor. The minor is equal to the determinant of the matrix after eliminating row one and now column two. We have a two by two determinant where row one is zero zero and row two is four six. The entry in row one column three is cofactor one comma three, which is equal to negative one raised to the power of one plus three times the corresponding minor. To find the minor, we eliminate row one column three. The minor is equal to the determinant of the remaining two by two determinant, where row one is zero negative two and row two is four negative two. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stop here, but the remaining cofactors are already listed and then we need to simplify them to find the cofactor matrix. Again, let's at least simplify the first row. In row one, column one, we have the square of negative one, which is positive one, and the determinant is equal to negative 12 minus zero, or negative 12. One times negative 12 gives us negative 12 in row one, column one of the cofactor matrix. For the entry in row one, column two, we have the cube of negative one, which is negative one, and the determinant is zero minus zero, which of course is zero, giving us an entry of zero in row one, column two of the cofactor matrix. Let's go and take a look at one more. In row one, column three, we have the fourth power of negative one, which is positive one, and the determinant is zero minus negative eight, which simplifies to one times positive eight, which is eight, giving us an entry of eight in row one, column three, of the cofactor matrix. So you may want to pause the video and verify the remaining entries for the cofactor matrix. 
For number four, we're asked to find the inverse of matrix A, and we'll do this using the adjoint method, where A inverse is equal to one divided by the determinant of matrix A times the adjoint of A, where adjoint A is equal to the transpose of the cofactor matrix. So before we find the inverse matrix, we do have to find the adjoint of A by transposing the cofactor matrix that we just found. So we just found this cofactor matrix, and therefore the adjoint of A is equal to the transpose of this matrix. To transpose the matrix, the first column of the cofactor matrix becomes the first row in the transpose, or the first row of the adjoint of A. The second column of the cofactor matrix becomes the second row of the transpose, or of the adjoint of A. And the third column of the cofactor matrix becomes the third row of the transpose, or the third row of the adjoint matrix. So now that we have the adjoint of A, and we already have the determinant, we can use the formula to find A inverse. Let's do this on the next slide. The determinant of A is equal to negative 56, giving us one divided by negative 56, and then we have times the adjoint of A, which again is the transpose of the cofactor matrix. Next, we perform the scalar multiplication, and then simplify the fractions. Simplifying the first row of A inverse is 3 fourteenths, 2 sevenths, and 1 seventh. The second row is 0, negative 1 half, 0, and the third row is negative 1 seventh, negative 5 fourteenths, and 1 fourteenth. I hope you found this helpful.